Well, stay on this island, a little island between two weirs with the lock going down the middle. It's just been amazing. Um, I could easily stay here a lot longer than two days, but unfortunately, gotta keep cranking, guys. Yeah, next stop for me, hopefully, Gunthorpe Lock and then Stoke Bardolf and other locks um, on our voyage to Nottingham. So let's hope we can make that before the river floods, because that is our main worry. We should be right, it'll be fine. So that's Hazelford Lock behind us. Um, that was a nightmare, to be honest. I couldn't film any of what just happened. <laughs> just got thrown about by the turbulence. Um, tying my rope to the side didn't help because uh, the wind got in the way as well. Uh, and the lock keeper didn't understand that my boat wasn't that great. Because <laughs> there's only 13 and a half horsepower on in this piece. Certainly not as fast as this one coming up here. If you've not seen my videos before, um, I'll tell you I've been on my boat for four years now and it's my home. I love it, but I wouldn't mind a little bit more power, especially on these huge rivers that I'm taking on. We've only got 14 miles to go until we get to Nottingham, but it's all headed upstream against the flow of the water and also against the wind. By the way, that is a sod to moor up against with the flow of the weir coming the other way. Right, here we are. Now, to open this lock, what I would do is first make sure the water was um, equalised, so both sides are the same. So I'd open the sluices on either side. So that's, that's far, that side, and uh, near is this one here. And then, once that's equalised, the water's the same level, I can open the gates, just push and hold until they're completely open. Right, now we can see what it's like leaving this mooring and going into the lock. However, the flow on this uh, coming off the weir makes it a lot easier to cast off. <laughs> Just go with the flow, man. So much easier. And um, of course, in the lock itself, there's no flow at all. But because there's no lock keeper here, I'm gonna use my immensely long rope to uh, tie up, up the top. And as cool as this view right now looks of the top of my boat it's not one that I enjoy it just means that it's just so far below where I am and the only thing that's controlling it is that long rope now there's going to be an incredible lot of um, water rushing in um, but you can steady it so that it's not going to be too disruptive and you do that by just just sort of 
pressing and holding for a little bit and then releasing. Um, so you've got control over both sluices, which is quite handy actually. Thankfully that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be and um, managed to control the flow of water and now we're going to just exit the lock like it ain't no thing. And now we're coming up to Dunthorpe Visitor Moorings and I'm going to stop here I think and have my lunch which is right here. Today's lunch is last night's quinoa, oh yeah, um, quinoa mixed with tuna, mayonnaise, a little bit of black pepper and salt, and some jalapenos, oh and some lettuce, healthy, iceberg lettuce. Now it tastes delicious but it looks absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Quinoa is supposed to give you loads and loads of energy so you can get out there and carry on cranking. Unfortunately, that day it just put me into an instant food coma and I ended up at Gunthorpe overnight. Just really picked up. Um, <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit, but we'll, we'll get there. It's just going to take a lot longer than uh, normal. But I can see the waves are uh, starting to appear, and um, yeah, the, the current of the river is, is bad enough as it is without all this wind. But we'll see how we get on. Just past the sign said 14 kilometres to Nottingham, which means about oh, nine to nine miles, something like that. So we're not far. Go crack it. died down and it's really calm again but it's normally got something to do with trees. Trees offer a really good barrier for, from the wind um, which, which is why most of the time on the river it is so windy. I mean here's a perfect example there's forests on either side of the river and there's there's no wind at all here. However we still have to compensate for the water from the weir pushing us over. You can, you can use it in your favour but most of the time it doesn't go that way for you so you got to watch out but you know if you just come in slowly and go with the flow and make sure you point the boat in the right direction you're normally good now this locks quite peculiar because it's got two sluices on each gate um, I don't know why that is but uh, perhaps it's just to control the flow of water a bit better Now on the last lock it seemed like the best idea would be to put it towards the back end of the lock. That's not always the case, I mean sometimes it's much better to put it right against the nose, right against the gates, you know, um, so the flow of the water that comes through the gates can just go underneath the boat and out the other side. Now I know you might be thinking, 13 kilometres per hour, look at that sign there. Um, 
what, why do they have it in kilometres and not miles? I thought the UK was supposed to be measuring everything uh, imperially when it comes to speeds and uh, distances. Well, because it is Britain and we're such a messed up country, we decide that we like using both um, for whenever it suits for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And I've asked lock keepers this, I've asked fellow boaters, I've asked everyone and no one can give me a straight answer. If you've got an idea, drop it in the comments below. I'll be interested to hear. Why do we use kilometres and miles per hour? I've just been talking to Roger and Naomi, who are a couple of boaters that live just uh, across that way, cross over on that island. Sort of living off grid, you know, sort of trying to get by and it's quite a really secluded mooring. Um, and, these, and those are very, very rare. But yeah, they were really lovely people. It was just nice to stop and chat to them for a bit. Um, and they even invited me in for a cup of tea, but I just said, look, I, I've got to get cranking onto Nottingham to try and uh, I've got to catch a train to London, you see, so um, pretty soon. So I need to get on in there so I can get that. Here are the visitor moorings. So they're just up from the lock. A uh, nice little place to stay for a couple of nights. There's not much around here and I'm running low on surprise so I definitely need to go on to Nottingham. Sorry, I'm just, I'm eating a peanut butter and banana sandwich. Absolutely disgusting. Radcliffe Viaduct, the Nottingham to Grantham line. It's quite a sight, I like it. So there is a train station here at Radcliffe, Radcliffe on Trent, but unfortunately there's no mooring, so I'd never be able to take the train from here to get to wherever I want to be. Just past the 5k sign, so that means 3.3 miles left to go. Going to mention that most of these locks have uh, facilities on them, so uh, if you just bear with me one second, I prefer to go alone if you just don't mind. Thank you. Now, this is interesting. This is all the um, hydroelectric power station um, work that's being done. Um, so pretty soon on all of these locks they'll have hydro power, which is cool, but it does disturb people like Roger and Naomi who have to actually leave their mooring while the work's being done. Anyway, here we are at a place called Home Pierpont. That is the correct pronunciation, all right? Well, most people around there call it Home Pierpoint. Um, anyway, this is where the UK's National Canoeing and Kayaking Centre is. And it's just a generally lovely place to be. It's a nice moor in this. Um, if I had a bigger boat, it would be perfect because the, the sides that you butt up against um, are not ideal for narrow boats. I'd rather be sort of in, in Nottingham, I think, uh, moored up alongside some other continuous cruisers. The funny thing is, as I was about to fall asleep, this party boat full of drunk students turns up, making me think that I'm already in central Nottingham. This is morning of uh, day three of the journey. And it's so quiet, apart from these geese behind me. It's really quiet here. So it's a shame to have to turn this engine on. But gotta get cranking, man. It's about seven o'clock. Gotta go to work. 
today, so that's why I'm starting now. So here we are, we've made it, we've made it to Nottingham, finally, against all odds. Um, and we're more now opposite the city ground, Nottingham Forest's ground. And uh, it's a lovely little moor in here where it's got the flowing water and everything. The Grantham Canal will be our next episode. And that actually starts just over there. It would start if it wasn't uh, mostly disused. But uh, we'll find out more about that in the next one. And then we'll explore Nottingham. Thanks for watching. See ya, bye. Yes, because you waited right to the end of the video, uh, I'm gonna treat you with this pub of the week and it's a cricket themed one. So if you actually like cricket uh, or love cricket, um, <laughs> this is the one for you. Um, and also, it's very close to all the football grounds as well. So I think a lot of fans just generally uh, drink here, sports fans. I popped in just to have breakfast because it was about 8 a.m. in the morning. So uh, yeah, cheap breakfast, uh, refillable coffee and everything. So yeah, it's all good. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with it. Cheers, bye.